decide you want to buy it, tell me that I was, hey, or just ask Jenny. The first poem is called Another Poem for Susanna Moody. And Susanna Moody was one of the first um, frontier pioneer women who immigrated to Canada. And Margaret Atwood, who you probably know of, has written a lot of poems for and about Susanna Moody, Moody. So that's why I call it Another Poem. Inside this photograph is a woman you do not know. Her shoulders slow from fatigue. Bones jut out in all directions. And her eyes are soft gray pebbles lost inside sandy beach backgrounds. You will not see this frail spectacle. I buried her at the bottom of Lake Ontario, deep in these black, polluted sands. Reincarnated, she now stands in Quebec, a more rounded figure, and has no sharp bones to crash against her sides in sleep. There is, however, a river cautioning tourists to vulnerability. I put it there because too many people wearing muddy boots stepped on Suzanne's rugs. I washed them one by one and watched you ease your feet lazily inside those boots. You never noticed the condition of her rugs. You never saw the low Canadian soil of the sun, thinking she had discovered freedom, only to become a word amongst foreign tongues. I rest in the center of this photograph, just beneath the surface. And it's difficult to say where exactly, how large or insignificant I have now become. The light reflecting the St. Lawrence is a distortion. But if you look long enough, eventually you will see me. and he 
hear wolves cry inside my plant. They howl beneath a personified moon I invented for company. In morning, Tumbaya touches a space no one else can reach, and the few who knew of Tumbaya's existence pretend that it never was. It never happened. Tumbaya. But now, Tumbaya is a silent centerpiece I eat beside each day. Friends who drop by tell me that if they wanted to visit a grave, they'd go to a graveyard. But I tell them, this is Tumbaya. I am close to Tumbaya here and don't have to drive miles to drop flowers beside a cement slab. You are alive here, Tumbaya. And now, after years of hearing wolves cry, they lie still at night, and my plants are silent. Approaches middle age and watches crow's lines leap around her eyes like lizards. Her lover asks her if she is afraid of wrinkles. She pulls out a white pubic hair and responds. <laughs> Thank you.